Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. And in this video, we are going to uh, pretty much wrap up the messaging app. Now, I've already built it out uh, just to save some time, but I will walk through it in detail on how I uh, created it. So, first thing, I created this page, uh, Messages, and I've already added the a menu here with messages in it. Um, this is the same on all these other pages. So if I go to index, I've got it here as well. And then when I go to the workflow, um, there's messages. So when the value is messages, it goes to the message page. So let's go to messages here. And there's um, basically three parts to this. Uh, one part is to create a new thread. So if you uh, watch the prior video where we added contacts, this uh, will take advantage, creating a new thread will take advantage of those contacts. And then we have over here a repeating group, which is going to show all of the uh, threads, the uh, message threads that have been created uh, by the user. And also, when you click on it, it will pop up another, or I shouldn't say pop up, it's going to show um, another repeating group, which will have the um, actual thread itself in the chat back and forth. So let's get into it. So create a new thread. So basically, on this button here, um, I do have a uh, custom state um, to either show or hide this um, on startup, uh, page load rather. I do have it showing, and then depending on um, if the uh, custom state is uh, yes or no, it'll make it uh, visible or not. And just a, a quick um, on how to do the custom states. So I've clicked on the page here, messages, and if I hit the little I, element inspector, and on this I can uh, create custom states here now. These are the two custom states I have on this page, a new thread, which is tied to this button here, um, and then which messages group. Um, and this basically will show or hide the respective re repeating group, um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. I've got the default values, so for false and uh, message thread. So when the page loads up, it's going to have these uh, values preloaded. Um, so for false, it's going to basically show this thread button just kind of when this uh, is false or no, it's going to show it. And just click on that page again on the I. And uh, similarly for message thread, which is basically this uh, repeating group here. Okay, so let's go to show. Okay, this is the group. So when I click on new thread, I'm going to set the state to that uh, custom state uh, to yes. And when I do that, you'll see when this new thread, uh, the custom state called new thread is yes, it's going to make this visible. When it's no, it makes it hidden. Similarly here, when this is yes, this button gets hidden. And then when it's no, it shows. So. What do we have going on here? Basically, I've got a group, and what we want to do is create um, a new thread. Uh, and to do that, we need to invite people. What I have here is a multi dropdown um, uh, sent to list. And basically, this is a plugin. multi-select dropdown. So if you go into the plugin um, and you take a look at multi-select dropdown, this is what you want to add. And basically how it works is you have your typical placeholder, um, you have a choice here of dynamic uh, or static. I'm going to have dynamic and the reason being is because for the user um, who's logged in, I need to look at the current user's contacts. So if you remember from the prior video, for users, I have my contacts, which is a list of users. So we basically first want to add a list of users um, uh, 
uh, that we can contact. And then when we do that, this will go and um, look at my list of contacts. And then it's going to show their first name and last name. So current option is, is basically my contacts and their first name. And current option, which is my contacts, their last name. And then over here, what we have is a multi-input uh, message. So my inputs over here, multi-line input is basically what that is. Right? And then I should have said earlier for, oops, I didn't want to do that. For this right here, this is the multi uh, drop down. So this is what you would choose for here. So for the message, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just go and type in whatever you want. I did have a maximum number of 300 characters. You can leave it wide open if you want. Um, and basically create a new thread. Now I'm going to jump over to the data group here. So I've basically added these two new uh, data types here. Message and all messages is um, the message it's, um, it itself. And in the message, what we want to know uh, is the message thread and the message uh, text. Um, and the text is going to be, uh, as you'd expect, what the message is, and then the thread is what thread it belongs to. And then the next one we have is message thread. And basically, message thread is going to have a list of messages. So every time a new message gets created, we're going to add it to the thread. Um, we're going to have the thread name as well. Uh, so if you look at, say, on your iPhone, uh, you'll have the name of your thread, which is kind of typically the users in that thread, but you can customize that. And then the other thing is the users. So we want to know um, the users in the thread. And that's basically how we create a new thread. Now once the new thread is created, we will, uh, let's see here, we have this repeating group. And in this repeating group, it's uh, no surprise, it's of type message thread, because basically we want to show all the message threads in this repeating group. And I should say that uh, on page load again, message thread is, is going to be what shows up here, is visible. So we're going to do a search for message threads. And basically what we have is that the user, uh, so the list of the users within it, contains the current user. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, when you're logged in and you're on a message thread, you're in that message thread. Um, and then we do a search on that, and it basically shows all of your message threads. So that's pretty straightforward there. And what I've done is um, I show the current uh, message threads thread name. Um, and I also put in the timestamp, so when the message was created. Um, and it's basically in this kind of format, so today's date um, and the time. And then, of course, we have the message itself. Um, I should point out in here that I have last item and, and last item. And this is basically because uh, when this repeating group runs, I want to have the, uh, the, I don't want the first item that was created in the thread. I want to have the last item that was created in the thread. Uh, so basically, this will show the last message that was in the thread. The other thing is, I have in here um, a workflow. And basically, what I wanted to do is anytime for, you'll see there's three different fields. And I originally, when I was playing around with this, I had this all as one text field. But then for formatting purposes, I broke them up. Um, and you'll, you'll see when I get to the demo. Um, I wanted to have the, the names here uh, to be left justified. I wanted the timestamp to be right justified. And I wanted to have enough space in here for the, the, the thread um, as, as well. So that's why there's three uh, text fields. Um, if you don't care as much about formatting, you could have certainly done this just in one text field. The other thing I wanted to do on this is uh, when any of these text fields are clicked, that it would go to the actual message um, itself. Um, and the way I did that is in the workflow here. So you'll see it's I've got it three times for the, the field, the, the group, the timestamp, and the message itself. 
And what we want to do here is we need to send the data from the repeating group, and it's the current cells uh, message thread. Um, we need to send it to the, the thread message. So this is important. If you don't send this to the, the group thread message, then uh, there won't be any data showing up um, for the thread. And now we need to set the state here. So basically, by setting the messages, um, which message group and messages, so element is the whole page, messages is the name of this page here. Which message group, I just made that up, um, which message group, and then the value is messages. So this is basically going to hide the repeating group that has all the message threads, and it's going to show the specific um, uh, chat um, going on uh, with messages. And then what I wanted to do is scroll to the entry um, for this. If you have a lot of back and forth in your texting, um, what, this, what this will do is it's going to show the last item in the thread. So it's basically going to scroll to the bottom of your threads, um, if you will, and show this one at the bottom. And this is similar, again, if you go to your iPhone, um, when you click on a thread that you have with a group of people, it's going to go right to the bottom of the thread. Um, and that's effectively what this does here. And again, I've just repeated that for these other text fields. Okay, so that is the thread messages. Um, have that. <clears throat> okay, what I did here was I, I have a group here that I created and basically in this group it's going to have the repeating group um, with the texting uh, for the, the thread, uh, the ability to reply and then but to, to uh, submit the reply. I also have this return here and basically what this does is when you're done with doing your chatting to return back to your list of, of threads. So let's kind of quickly look at that. And again, it's just setting the state um, to message thread. So basically, this, this group will become hidden because the uh, custom state will no longer be messages, and so this will be hidden. Now, similarly to the other repeating group, um, the data source, so this is going to be of type message because now we're looking at the actual messages within the message thread. And this is going to be uh, the, the data to put into this repeating group is going to be the parent group's message thread, messages in thread. So basically, the prior um, repeating group was all of the threads. Each cell has a specific thread. That specific thread is the parent group message thread to this message here. Uh, so basically, we'll get the data from there, and, and similar to the other repeating group, it's got who the instead of the, the the title of the thread, it's basically who created that specific message, uh, the timestamp uh, for the message, same format as the other, and then here we've basically got the uh, the message that was uh, texted. Uh, here, it's a simple multi-line, same as um, the other one that we used, and I just, again, capped it at 300 uh, characters. And then reply to thread is, is pretty simple. You have to create a message, um, and it's the multi-line. Then when the message is created, we need to add it to the thread. And so basically, um, we're taking the messages in the thread and we're adding the newly created message from step one into that thread group. And it's the parent group's message thread. And then we go and we basically have the repeating group scroll to the bottom again, and we reset the relevant inputs. And basically what that means is that these inputs here. So if I typed in hello world and hit reply to thread, once that happens, this is going to reset to type reply here. So then that way I don't have to go in and delete the hello world. And that's basically it. Let's, uh, let's do a quick demo and do a refresh page here. So this user's already logged in and um, this person's name is uh, U2, uh, so user2 first name. 
we're going to create a new thread. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice I should say uh, there's nothing here in the repeating group. That's because there's no content into it. But once we set up a new thread, then you'll see that um, the repeated group will show up over here. So if I click on this, uh, basically the way I have it set up is that for this user 2, I only have one user that the person's connected to, and that's user 1. And I'm just going to say, hello, user 1. Create a new thread. You'll see that this immediately disappears over here. And this is the first entry in the, uh, the repeating group. So who the user is, um, uh, the, the, the user thread, I should say, um, and the timestamp, and hello user is what I typed in. I'm going to go over here, and this is user1, and you can see hello user1 has already got um, a message in it. Now if I click on it, now it shows the other repeating group, and I could return and here's the message, and so I can say, so this was from uh, user2, first name, so I can say, hey, user2, how are you? Submit it, and automatically shows up here, and then I could go back. Still only got one thread going on, and these are the two messages in the thread go back over here and you'll see it's automatically got the latest text so the latest text on here was this one so just to show you um, things are good on my end and you'll see here and I can scroll up it's got the latest on the on the bottom here and you'll see it automatically put the latest uh, uh, entry in the thread. So I can click on it and again it scrolls down to the bottom automatically. And I'm good. Glad to hear all's well. Like that. I'm good. Glad to hear all is well. And that is basically um, how we create a, uh, a message uh, messaging function or feature within uh, your Bubble app. There's certainly a lot more things you could do with this uh, for your users. You could go and add a little picture. Um, you can go and make it so that the title here of the thread, uh, you could have a little edit button here to change the, uh, the title of the thread. Um, so it's really up to your imagination what you would like to do. You can change the format of the timestamp. Um, so there's a variety of different things that you can do. This is the, the power of, of creating your own messaging app. You can, within Bubble, you can go and customize it uh, however that uh, you would like. You can have the ability to uh, add users to this. Um, I'm actually going to go over here. And this, this user one has more people in their, uh, their group. So you can see here, I can add. And I also limited this to just three people uh, that they can add in the chat. You can certainly do more. Um, and then, hey group, good afternoon. And then you can see here, um, again, the names uh, are just by default put into the, uh, the title of the thread. Um, click on it, um, and then you can just type away with the messages, and that's, that's basically, uh, basically it. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, how-to video on uh, creating a message app. If you have any questions or comments, you please leave them uh, below in this uh, the YouTube video. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, look for more videos coming from me in the near future. Thank you.